What's going on, everyone? So going into this season, there was a lot of expectations on the Lakers. They had an excellent offseason, or what was perceived to be an excellent offseason. They were able to retain all of the key pieces that led to the conference finals. They were able to add and kind of upgrade and trim around the edges. And this was a roster that looked prime and ready uh, to go and make a real playoff push and maybe even potentially win an NBA championship. And so far, it just hasn't really gone that way. Part of it is injuries, part of it is just lack of effort and energy at times, part of it is lack of consistency, part of it is coaching, part of it is just the players not playing to the level in which we need them to play. Uh, You know, if you told me in the offseason that, hey, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, 60 games in or whatever, 53 games in or whatever it is, would be, you know, hey, they'd be basically uh, five games out six games out, you know, a handful of games, basically, uh, I would have been like, oh man, the Lakers are probably the one seed or the two seed, right? I thought going into the season, the Lakers would finish somewhere in that like three to five range, just because I thought that the Lakers, they would, one, have LeBron James and Anthony Davis miss 20 plus games, which knock on wood, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, And then also I thought that they would prioritize health over making that strong push for seeding. That the Lakers would look at it kind of like Denver is in a lot of ways. Like, hey, like, you know, let the cards fall where they may. As long as we're healthy going to the postseason, good luck. And that's kind of how I looked at it where it's like if the Lakers are two games back at like, say, the three seed, but they're basically, as long as they just stay 500 or whatever, they're locked into, at worst, the five seed. I figured that they would kind of go through the normal routine. But Lakers are not in that position. The Lakers are in a bad position right now, and it's even worse with the loss to the Phoenix Suns because the Lakers had a real opportunity to get a full game over Phoenix, kind of climb an inch closer to that potential fifth or sixth seed, and just also with Phoenix having the number one hardest schedule in the league would have kind of went a long way. Now, the Lakers do still have the tiebreaker. They've played each other five times because of the NCAA tournament, so... It's good that if push comes to shove, the Lakers would have the tiebreaker, but it would have been nice to get that win, get a full game. Fortunately, the Lakers didn't show up in the first quarter. They were playing catch-up all night, and they fell short, which doesn't help. But look, the Lakers aren't completely out of it. right? Again, ninth seed, they're only half a game ahead of the Warriors. Lakers do have the Warriors uh, slated a couple times to, to finish this season, and we got to win both of those, in my opinion. Warriors have the 25th easiest schedule, uh, or toughest schedule, um, which is going to be tough for the Lakers. Lakers are sixth. Um, but look, Dallas, they've been playing really good basketball lately, um, and they have a much easier schedule, so it's going to be tough with them uh, to catch them. They very likely could end up moving into the top five or six. To me, it's the Pelicans, the Suns, and the Kings. Pelicans are dealing with all kinds of just mess uh, with injuries, guys suspensions uh, and they're currently on a two game skid but the problem is we have to win games right if if we another thing is if we would have beaten the suns right pelicans lost and mavs lost that would have given us a full game on all of them but instead we go backwards and now we're kind of just in the same spot with that we're three games out of the eighth seed three and a half out of the seventh uh and through fifth right um we're only really three games out of the win column from some of these teams, but you can't make up losses, right? You can make up wins, you can't make up losses. So the Lakers do have a lot of work to do. To me, right, I still believe they can get into that six seed at worst. I do, uh, because they do have tiebreakers over the Pelicans and over the Suns, which is key. That's very important, because if they finish with the same record as the Pelicans and Suns, who again, Suns have the toughest schedule, and the Pelicans have the 10th toughest schedule. So the Lakers can catch those two teams, again, in my opinion. Will they? I don't know. Time will tell. But here's what, to me, is the deciding factor. And kind of one of the the reasons I lean towards it's probably more likely we land in the 7th or 8th spot. Again, we have to worry about the Warriors catching us, but to me, look at the teams in front of you, not the teams behind you. You do your job, even if they do their job, guess what? You're going to come out ahead. So to me, the Lakers kind of control their destiny in that regard. But March is going to... We still have two games here in February, right? You have the Clippers and you have the Wizards. We got to win both of those. We definitely got to win both of those. But to me, going into that Kings game on March 13th, 
I think is going to tell us a lot about where we are as far as potential seeding, right? Because March's schedule is just brutal. I mean, these are this is just the first six games in March. You got the Nuggets, the Thunder, the Kings, the Bucks, the Timberwolves, and the Kings again. You have to, I mean, absolutely have to beat the Kings both of those times. It's easier said than done. The Kings have kind of had the Lakers numbers. Sabonis is like 11 and 0 or something crazy like that against Anthony Davis. Uh, so you really do have to figure that out. Because if we're going to catch Sacramento, who has already beaten us twice, we got to beat them both of these times, right? Because that would give us two full games uh, in the standings against Sacramento, which we're only three and a half games back, right? We only got to win like one or two more games more than they do, and we're in good shape. And Sacramento's kind of been hot and cold this season, right? Denver, obviously, is going to be tough. The Thunder, I think we have a good shot at because I think our size kind of bothers them a little bit. Bucks are going to be tough. Timberwolves, uh, both games were close, and one of them was at LeBron. Can we can we finally pull out that win? Good thing is, too, is the first five games are all home games. So that's very important. We've been a good home team. We haven't been a good road team. So hopefully we can rattle off some wins here. But going into March, right, let's say we let's say we beat the Clippers and we beat the, the Wizards, right? That gives us two, two more games. Now we're five games over 500. Right. Let's say you beat. Let's say you beat the Thunder, the Kings twice, which, like I said, we really need to beat them. And let's say you do beat Minnesota. Right. Then now the Lakers would be like seven games over five hundred. Now you're you're heading in the right direction. We got twenty three games left. Lakers got to win like fourteen of those games. Right. But if you end up winning, say four out of these six plus those other two. Right now, all of a sudden, you only got to win like maybe eight more games, nine more games the rest of the way. You'd be in really good shape and you're heading in the right direction. Uh, but that's the problem is that let's say they lose to the Clippers and then you let's say you beat the Wizards and then you lose to the Nuggets and then you drop one of those Keens games and you drop, say, the Bucks game. Right now, all of a sudden, you're only like three games over 500 and you got to win like now 11 out of your next. 20 games or whatever. There's 11 out of your next like 18 games. It's just going to be really hard to do. Right? So to me, going into that Sacramento Kings game on March 13th, I think is going to tell us our answer. And the concern is the way that the Lakers have played and the lack of consistency is why I lean towards the 7th or 8th spot may end up being the most likely scenario. Again, I'm holding out hope personally. I also think as guys start coming back, Right, Max Christie, um, he he's already back. Cam Reddish uh, was uh, like a game time decision. Basically, he was giving it a go right before testing the ankle uh, before the Suns game, and Lakers just decided to to play it safe, keep him out. So hopefully, he comes back in, in the next matchup against the Clippers. We could use him mightily. So now you got two of those guys back. Gabe Vincent is supposed to come back early March uh, to maybe mid March. Right, so if he can come back, say, around one of those Kings games, that would be nice. That would be very helpful. Ideally, the sooner the better. Kind of let him get through his his lumps and, and kind of get back on the court. Um, but if you get Gabe Vince back, all we'd be waiting on is Jared Vanderbilt. And now, look, we're not out of the woods yet as far as Jared Vanderbilt returning, but hopefully he comes back sooner rather than later. That's the idea. That's the hope. Um, but we'll see with that regard. But getting guys back, I think, would help a lot. So, look. Guys got to step up. Guys got to play the right way. Darvin Ham's got to figure out what Spencer Dinwiddie's role is outside of just standing in the corner and jacking up threes. It's driving me insane. that That's like basically his only role right now with the Lakers. Right? We need Reeves to continue to be better. He's kind of still having these hot and cold moments. We need him to kind of round out and be more consistent. D'Lo continues to be spectacular. We need that more from him. He's got to continue to play the right way. And we just we got to make that push. Again, we're not out of the race for the six seed. We're not. We're still right in the mix. We're still right in the thick of it. But it, it, we're we're not out of time. But the clock is ticking, and it's ticking fast. And so we gotta we gotta go and and rattle this out. You know, right now we're down eleven with like five minutes left. Right, like we gotta go make that push and go get back and win this game. So hopefully they get it done. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. 
past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do um, you think the Lakers end up as the sixth seed? Do you think that they end up as the seventh or eighth seed? Um, do you think that they end up finishing ninth or tenth? If they finish ninth or tenth, then I really don't think the Lakers end up making the playoffs. I'm not saying that they can't. It's just really hard to win two straight games to get in. I'm not saying that they can't. They can absolutely do it. But it's just so many variables. So many things could happen. A fluke game, whatever. Especially the way that the Lakers are so inconsistent. Um, once we get into the postseason if we get in the postseason, then I I have full belief in the Lakers at that point, right? To me, it's kind of one of those things where, like, I I trust the Lakers in the playoffs, but I don't trust them to get to the playoffs. So we'll see. Time will tell. But anyway, again, love to hear thoughts and opinions. That being said, if you like this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.